Welcome back to the channel, folks. And this is Moby D. It is October, meaning in the United States, it is Filipino American History Month, AKA FAM. And what an appropriate time for me to talk about my recent experience in the Philippines. In this video, I'll be talking about what is a diaspora, being a transnational family, grief of time, and I'll also end the video with some book recs on Filipino experience. First thing first, let's define Filipino American History Month. This is obviously a month-long observation of Filipino American history. A historical fact, the Loose Seller Act of 1946 allowed a quota of 100 Filipinos and 100 Indians from the country of India to be naturalized. But Filipinos have actually been in the United States since the 16th century, which is a result of the Spanish having settled in the Philippines to get access to China and on their way back from Manila, Philippines, up through the Gulf Coast, they would stop in New Orleans, Louisiana on their way back to Spain. And those are the first Filipinos that ever came to the United States and potentially the first Asians. This isn't a history channel, but I wanted to provide that context and you can look up more of this history yourself. Also really, 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 really quickly, the Rizal Center in the city of Chicago is a Filipino cultural center and they are in need of funds. They're trying to raise $20,000 to do repairs and all of these updates that the building really, really needs. So if you can make a donation, use this link. Thank you. So what is a diaspora? A diaspora is a population such as members of an ethnic or religious group who originated from one place but dispersed to different locations. I, being born in Italy as a Filipino, am from a diaspora of Filipinos in that country. My parents immigrated from the Philippines to Europe in the late 1980s. For similar reasons, people come to the U.S., which is for a better life. The vast migration was so significant that it continues to be a federally recognized terms called OFWs, which stands for Overseas Filipino Workers. Like, there's a line for it at Philippine airports. There's OFWs and then foreigners. Technically, I'm a foreigner. It's very odd. So my parents brought over my brother a few years after they settled in and I was born a few years after that. And we lived there until I was eight years old. Similar to many Filipino immigrants now, they were domestic caregivers to Italian families. And just another definition, but domestic caregivers provide care in homes, ranging from housework to medical attention. The reason this is so common among Filipinos is because there's a lot of Filipino nurses that immigrate. However, when they move to countries such as the United States and Italy, their credentials are not deemed as valid. And so they take on work that is similar, but with a significantly lower pay. In some cases, they don't even get two consecutive days off. They'll get a Thursday off through the week and then part of a Sunday off, which is like 1.5 days. After some time, my parents were employed by somebody that they actually developed a good relationship with who offered to co-sign an apartment that my parents could own and actually she bought it so that my parents could just pay her. Her credit is also just deemed just better by banks than us trying to buy a house or an apartment there. My parents also started a VHS business when that was like a thing. And it just meant the Filipinos could rent Filipino movies in Filipino language. It's really the equivalent of a Filipino grocery store or a restaurant as you would see here in the United States. So that means we're a transnational family. My parents were doing well in Italy, but somehow they knew that socioeconomic mobility was still going to be difficult if they stayed there. So they visited the US trying to find jobs that would sponsor their visa. And we moved in 2002 to LA County in Fullerton. At first, I know that's not LA County, and then Norwalk is where we currently live. And my brother decided to go back to the Philippines and a little while after moved back to Italy because he didn't want to be in the United States. At the age of 22, when we moved to the United States, he actually experienced discrimination from other Filipinos making fun of his English accent. Mind you, at the time, he spoke Filipino, Italian, and English. 
if he has an accent, he has an accent. It was just so messed up when I heard the story from him. He was being pestered by other Filipinos. They just thought they were so much better than him because he had an accent. Just stupid. So my parents and I have been here since then. And in this trip to the Philippines, we reunited for the first time in eight years. So the grief of time, growing up in the United States without much family, aside from less than five that we could visit throughout the year, and really no one that I could hang out with on a weekly consistent basis it was hard i'm 30 now and i've never known what it's like to go over to my cousin's place or be pestered by my aunts and uncles at parties and i haven't had my brother to like look out for me and just hang out with me since i was eight and the truth is because of how i have been raised and how i see the world there is no version of me that would ever feel like i fully belong here or anywhere and what i've been dealing with since my return has just been the grief of my parents leaving in their early 30s the age that i'm in now so that i could have the present and the access and the privileges to life that I have now. Lost the migration. I know I have a lot of privileges living in the United States, being able to live away from my parents, having a salary job, but the cost of that is high. It's not financial, it's emotional. My parents left all of their families in the Philippines, and then they also left their established community in Italy after being there for 14 years. And for what? For me, for the remittances that they bring back to the Philippines, a remittance is a non-commercial transfer of money by a foreign worker, a member of the diaspora community usually, or a citizen with family ties abroad. Money sent home by migrants competes with international aid as one of the largest financial inflows to developing countries. And so the numbers are kind of varied depending on what you're reading. It's the equivalent of 600 to 800 billion dollars is being sent back to the Philippines from foreign countries. Again, I just want to like reiterate this fact, how much dependency this is, because in 2000, the Estrada, president at the time, the Estrada administration declared the year 2000 as the year of overseas as the year of overseas Filipino workers in the recognition of the determination and and supreme self-sacrifice of overseas Filipino workers. Like, a year title, which is very long, by the way, and it just does not sit well with me. I have always felt a lot of pressure to succeed and be the symbol for the family. And all I want is to just be able to hang out with my cousins. Meanwhile, my parents' generation is out here being named for their self-sacrifice. Supreme self-sacrifice. So when I talk about my background, a lot of people romanticize that I'm from Italy and how cool it is to have family all over the world. In this visit especially, I thought of all the decisions they had to make to get me to this point. I am grateful for the sacrifices my parents made for me, but ultimately what they did is a bandage solution. It doesn't address the problem that Filipinos have to continue leaving the Philippines for work and for a better life for their families. They have to leave their families, their communities, their whole sense of selves because the country itself cannot create those opportunities for them. And what really rubs me the wrong way is that their money is just going to the economy of another country. And it continues this cycle of dependency from colonizers such as the United States. The easiest answer I can give to this question is usually Los Angeles mostly. I don't feel Filipino American because that is an incomplete part of my experience. I feel Filipino and I feel American, but I'm also of the Italian diaspora. As long as I hold them truthfully, I'll always have a sense of self, no matter what labels I get fizzled down into. But it is hard to fit my story into finite boxes, and we're all so much more dynamic than that. So for this Filipino American History Month, learn something you didn't know about. Filipinos in the United States. So here's some books that I've read that touch on Filipino history. Blood on the Rising Sun, The Japanese Invasion of the Philippines. This story is told from a woman's first perspective, point of view, point of view, who experienced the Japanese occupation firsthand. And if you didn't know, the Philippines were in Japan. The Japanese were in the Philippines for four years during World War II-ish era, and over that time actually killed 500,000 Filipinos. Japan was not being cute, to say the least. When the Elephants Dance, this is another book um, during the Japanese occupation. It's fictional, 
told from the point of view of people experiencing the Japanese occupation. What it really is, is a beautiful series of stories around magic and life lessons as they try to navigate the bombing that's going on above ground and as they try to find family members that like left. And I actually really love this book because it was, it felt like magic to me. It felt like folk, folklore being passed down. Patron Saints of Nothing. This is about a Filipino American. By the way, this is a YA young adult novel. He goes back to the Philippines to find out the truth about his cousin that recently died. And it was around a Duterte administration, so it does touch on the drug war. Next book is Strike. And this is actually about the farm workers movement in California. A lot of people know that Mexicans, particularly Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta, were really involved in that movement. But what a lot of people don't know is the Filipinos were actually picketing and asking for these rights before those folks got involved. But Cesar Chavez's platform just became a lot wider and bigger and louder. But Larry Itliong and other Filipino monongs, that is Filipino elders um, that are men, were already demanding better working conditions. So this is a really cool book on that. Stay through to the end. Let me know in the comments what you thought about this video and this new format of having a dialogue about my personal experience. I'll hopefully see you in the next one. So until next time, Mobiti.